Yeah. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. This is Bruce Rawls and School for Course in Miracles. And as always, thanks to Hi. Tim Wise and Lynn Corona for making this forum for all of us to share stuff that uh, can be truly helpful and looking at our minds and undoing the thought system of separation and substitution and specialness, which all have the letters S-I-N and I'll, I'll, I'll share my updated list a little bit later on that. <laughs> it's kind of fun list, fun list. So we've got two sections to, to cover tonight. And I've picked, picked a third um, reading that fits into it pretty nicely. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Denise. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we're going to go over the perceived purpose of sickness in the manual, which is the first section under how is healing accomplished, the fifth um, essay or whatever you want to call it in the manual for teachers. And then also the next following one after that, the shift in perception. So I didn't even think about a meditation, but we could just <laughs> meditate. I, I was so engrossed in, in the reading. I just thought, oh, but how, how about if we just, um, I know, let's, uh, I'm going to try something and see if I can find something real quickly here that might be helpful. Yeah, let's do this. Um, I was going to read the, uh, or as much as we can of the lesson 136. And I'll, I'll just read the, the last paragraph of that, which is paragraph 20 in lesson 136 as a meditation. And we can just um, contemplate that for a few moments uh, if quiet, but I'll read it first and then we can do that. So um, actually I'll read the first last two paragraphs. Uh, I paraphrase slightly. Our protection needs to be preserved by careful watching. If you let your mind harbor attack thoughts, yield to judgment, or make plans against uncertainties to come, you have again misplaced yourself and made a bodily identity which will attack the body for the mind is sick. Give instant remedy should this occur by not allowing your defenses to hurt you longer. Do not be confused about what must be healed, but tell yourself, I have forgotten what I really am for I mistook my body for myself. Sickness is a defense against the truth, but I'm not a body and my mind cannot attack. So I cannot be sick. So we'll just contemplate that for a few moments in silence. Okay, all right, gently come back to our wonderful little group here. And um, I'm gonna jump back over to uh, section five in the manual, how is healing accomplished? And the first subsection of that is section one, the perceived purpose of sickness. And I made a, made a few notes about these two sections and um, starting with the word purpose. And I was thinking about, you know, what's the purpose of anything, you know, the, the why. Hi, Abby. And um, the, I, I was looking at some of the synonyms of purpose, you know, motive, motivation, purpose, cause, reason, justification, intention, aim, objective, goal, end, and plan were a few that I uh, found. And they're all the, the why. Why do why do we do anything? And it seems like it always distills down to one of two motives, really, or, or reasons or purposes. And we're either wanting to further the ego's identification as a separate self, or um, undo that, and that our purpose then becomes to 
free our mind from that burden and see all interests as shared in truth and uh, you know, that everyone is our becomes our savior instead of our our uh, the, the villainous enemy that <laughs> the ego thinks it needs to attack at every turn so so then I just made a little note. We, we must seem to perceive value or benefit in something to follow it or to pursue it. But so often we don't honestly evaluate the real value or the benefit of ego's wild goose chases. And uh, we, <laughs> if, we th if we think of what we've done with most of our lives, uh, and probably who knows how many lifetimes, um, trying to make the world work as uh, an end in itself rather than uh, a classroom for for undoing uh, the belief in separation um, you know there's a, plenty to work with in our, our mind isn't there so starting with the first uh, sentence in this section uh, i'll just read that and then share a, a sort of an equivalent that came to mind as i was reading it First sentence says, healing is accomplished the instant the sufferer no longer sees any value in pain. First of all, is everyone there? Okay, great. Um, and I was thinking, well, that's another way of restating that might be correction is completed when a mind, having chosen ego's insanity, realizes that suffering is of no value whatsoever. And of course, we're not going to see that unless we make a little room for Holy Spirit's um, translation that kind of edges out and nudge, nudges <laughs> nudges out the ego's misinterpretation of everything. And that, of course, um, has to do with uh, recognizing that our ego being nothing is a completely unworthy uh, candidate or choice for our identity, but our real shared identity, being everything, is completely worthy of everything, <laughs> and is everything. <laughs> that, that covers some bases there, doesn't it? In, any thoughts or comments on that so far? Well, the, the first sentence is really incredulous in terms of, I mean, Pop the book open, read that first sentence. Um, well, I don't see any value in pain. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this, uh -huh. book ain't, this book ain't for me. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's assuming a lot there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it assumes that we've already started recognizing the, the pain and or at least have come to that Helen and Bill point in our minds of, you know, there must be a better way because something's not working here, right? Yeah, we've at least moved enough out of denial to to begin to consider that uh, yeah maybe things aren't optimal. <laughs> yeah, is that uh, is that what Dave was going to say? <clears throat> That's exactly what I was going to say. <clears throat> um, it, it's <clears throat> yeah, once we um, come to that that point where you know this ain't working anymore, <clears throat> then we've stopped valuing uh, pain. That's what I was going to say. Yes. Yeah. And, and noticing when we're valuing pain is, is, is really, I think, just a hugely important part of the course, isn't it? And um, I think it was Lesson 182 that I, I listened to over and over again, Ken's commentary on that uh, two or three years ago. And in it, he said, you know, the, the whole purpose of the course is not to uh, make us suffer. It's to point out how much we've made ourselves suffer by choosing the ego. I'm paraphrasing as usual, but but I thought that was that's such a really important thing. And it's and that recognition, you know, that cognitive dissonance was a, just a fancy way of just saying if I can put the two thought systems together side by side and compare them honestly, you know, the ego scores a, a giant goose egg zero zip nada and Holy Spirit comes out with, you know, A plus 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 because there's there's nothing lacking in the, the Holy Spirit's assessment of our real identity, but um, you know the ego's assessment 
is always one of condemnation, even if it takes countless forms and disguises and masks. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, when, once we've bought into the idea that, you know, we're less than, than wonderful, <laughs> how are you, you want to put that on a sliding scale of, of, you know, from mediocre to horrific, you know, um, it, it really, you know, doesn't really matter as long as there's something lacking, um, you know, we're not going to be at peace. And it's sort of a chicken and egg thing, I suppose. But anyway, the, the next couple of sentences, I, I, I was thinking, well, I'll, I'll read those and then I, I had a restatement to come to mind. Who would choose suffering unless he thought it brought him something and something of value to him? He must think it is a small price to pay for something of greater worth. So I was trying to rephrase that and, and, and perhaps to make it accessible from a different angle. And... Um, so I, I put, what decision-making mind would actually want ego's misery unless we bought the propaganda that rad, rationalized the, quote, advantages, unquote, of personhood, the bizarre notion that identifying as a silly, seemingly separate self miraculously outweighed the entire nightmare of the horrific thought system of sin, guilt, fear, oblivion, and death. Now, admittedly, that's a much longer sentence, but <laughs> I try to pack some some helpful thoughts in there <laughs> in case that's in case that's helpful, hopefully. But uh, you know, we we all seem to have bought into this idea that well, you know, the ego, yeah, the ego's got some problems, but you know, maybe maybe the, maybe it'll work. You know, could yeah, maybe you know, give it a fair shake. Even though that used car salesman has always sold us lemons for how many millennia? <laughs> but uh, anyway, so and then I was thinking about the you know the phrase you know the the uh, you know when your back is against the wall and and then that you know thinking about the motivation again you know like why why would we be motivated to choose against the ego not to fight against it but just to see that it's ridiculous and then drop it and just just let go of our tenacious hold on it um so i you know, i'm just writing you know of course the miracles would seem to be constantly reminding us of the vertical choice with the holy spirit as contrasted with egos avoid at all costs warning to not get our minds against the wall the wall of duality that we made up but can just as easily with holy spirit's help uh unmake that wall through true forgiveness so the horizontal choice, you know, the countless seeming choices of, of the ego are all the, the, um, the dead ends in the world of thinking, well, if I can just get my health regimen going the right direction, if I, can, if I can get my finances and my relationships and my career and, you know, all the, all the big, big categories and the little subcategories and all the, the gazillions of variations around the the wheel of misfortune. If I can just get all that stuff lined up, then maybe I can make this ego thing work. And, um, you know, if we just kind of watch that without condemnation and just see how, oh, there I was trying to, trying to make that work again <laughs> and, and, and see how quickly we try to invest our peace of mind in those strategies and, uh, and, and, and watch our motivation and, and not condemn just to say, and I love how Ken Wapnick keeps coming at that from so many different angles. It's just, just look, but, but not judge or condemn. Just to say, oh well, there it is. There's you know very dispassionate, objective observation of seeing something that doesn't work, and if we see that it doesn't work enough clearly, and put it next to right up next to what does work, the Holy Spirit's true compassion, uh, true forgiveness. Um, you know, eventually we'll just want to drop that whole dysfunctional thing, right? It would seem. So, anyway, I just kind of like the the idea of, of you know the the egos back against the wall is usually uh, it's a physical metaphor, uh, a rather claustrophobic one actually. <laughs> you know, the box the box canyon thing. Oh, I got. In fact, I was thinking about this earlier today, Tim. Tim, I know you brought up. Uh, 
that the officer and the gentleman movie and, and the, the line, yeah, I got nowhere else to go, you know, <laughs> and, but that's kind of where, you know, the ego has us boxed in and we think, oh, well, I, I don't have any real alternatives and the Holy Spirit says, well, no, there's another one you haven't considered here. You know, there's a real alternative that maybe, you know, we, we could try. And like, kind of like Jesus was telling Helen, you know, what, what if you actually tried, you know, this course and <laughs> instead of just having a, decent understanding of the theory you know you know uh, practice it you know when when our uh our backs seem to be against the wall but really it's our minds against the wall you know the wall of the ego's <clears throat> imprisoning thought system right so um anyway so that's kind of where i was at with the uh coming up with some variations so i'm going to finish reading that first paragraph um but i'll i'll, I'll read the first three sentences again Healing is accomplished the instant the sufferer no longer sees any value in pain. Who would choose suffering unless he thought it brought him something and something of value to him? He must think it is a small price to pay for something of greater worth. For sickness is an election, a decision. It is the choice of weakness in the mistaken conviction that it is strength. And I had I had fun over the, the last few years um, compiling a little list of words that have the letters S-I-N in them. And sickness is obviously one of those. Um, so I'm just going to rattle off this list, which is kind of a fun list. Uh, cursing, <laughs> S-I-N. Defensiveness, disinformation, illusion, insincerity, isolation. Uh, repulsiveness, <laughs> sacrificing, section, which is like, and then parentheses, I put not the whole enchilada, uh, seeking, and in parentheses, but not finding, uh, segregation, sensation, and, uh, and then I, in parentheses on that one, I put not the neural impulses of a body, but making a big deal about ego's misinterpretations, and then, of course, separation, uh, session, which is a chunk of eternity rested from the whole and trapped in time. And then sickening, isn't it? <laughs> and sickness. And then single, the belief that we're alone instead of all one. Uh, singularity, uh, siren, uh, my parentheses there had luring us to shipwreck or instilling fear. And then, uh, I'm, and then skin, pretty superficial, huh? <laughs> And then uh, something has S-I-N in it. As Roseanne, Rosanna Dana said, it's always something, right? Uh, I'm, I'm almost done, so hang in there. Uh, specialness, of course, uh, specification. So that's, that's uh, you know, fragmented identities, craving specific outcomes, starvation, striving, substitution, suffering, and I put with or without succotash, and this is insanity. <laughs> so anyway, there's there's my current list du jour of, of words that that have the letters S I N in them. Dave, do you have another one? I do. How about sinking? Oh, good, good. Okay, that's, that's got a that's, that's sinking feeling. That's, that, I, I, that's, that's that's going on the list. Thanks. Spellbinding. All right, we we might have to have a an ongoing <laughs> spell. Binding, sinking. Okay, I'm jotting those down. All right, thank you. <laughs> those are going to go on the list. There's probably a few gazillion more, but that's that's enough for now. Anyway, but but the, my, 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 my big. Oh, Lisa, Lisa had one. Okay. You're I, muted. I I can't tell. Did you? I can't remember now. The the list was so uh, huge. Um, did you say? <laughs> did you say sneaking? Sneaking. Oh, that's a good one too. Okay, that's going on list too. All right. <laughs> maybe maybe you should just uh, take this offline, and you can just everyone email me your 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 top yeah. seventeen gazillion or whatever. Yeah. Okay. I think Vicky had something earlier. Okay. Well, it was before this uh, repulsive list. Um, <laughs> um, we were talking about. The healing is accomplished. The instant the sufferer no longer sees any value in pain. And now, um, the mind 
of the one who's choosing suffering as valuable. How does it hear, or is, is it not ours to know? How does it hear that there's another option? Like, you know, like um, God was after my mind long before I came to the course, you know, like things happened in our lives that brought us along the path, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or a path or several paths to get here. And um, there's people find value in suffering because it's a projection, right? They are trying to make somebody else feel guilty. And pretty, pretty frequently. Huh? Yeah. And I'm just wondering, um, gosh, do they, do they need to go through that to get to the other side to, to find the other option? Is that their only, their only, um, Well, not their only possibility, but how do you stop listening? I guess that's what we're learning in the course. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean that, that's a pretty big question, isn't it? But but I think the course addresses it in a lot of ways. I yeah. mean, the first response I had to what you were saying was was you know, you know, where where does that do we need? To, maybe I'm paraphrasing what you said, but but it it seems like we we all have at least a little glimmer or a whisper in our mind all the time. You know, we can choose to ignore it, and I think the course uh, addresses that in a lot of different ways. But it seems like we always have some part of our mind. In fact, it even says that you know the ego couldn't completely obliterate um, you know the awareness of our real identity. Yeah. yeah. Right. So so no matter how you know you know thick a wall we try in our imagination to try to to obliterate that thought, it's it's the only reality. So it's sooner or later it's going to win out. <laughs> Right, gone yeah. on. and that, and that's the yeah. true hope that we have, right? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But there was more to what you were saying. Oh, okay. um, I, I just, you know, I'm almost. <laughs> there's a lot of people that you know at our age they're uh, experiencing um, end of body stuff, and um. So I, I think of I have a brother-in-law that has uh, had a lot of health stuff over the last year and a half, and it seems like he he's in a lot of pain and um, yeah, just wonder how. Like I think because of the course, I go well. It's not a body, you know. Like <laughs> why is he listening to, to that as his guide and. Um, I don't really get to talk to him very much or see him very much, but I think about him and, and um, you know, in the ways that the course teaches us. But um, yeah, I just, sometimes it's just, well, you know, the, the food processor is breaking down. <laughs> you know? You're talking about the food processor that we all walk around in that. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's good. I like that. <laughs> and and when, when it breaks down, you either quit using it or go get a new one, I guess. But right, reincarceration, <laughs> recycling. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that you know, that's that's a huge, huge topic, and it does seem like you know the course doesn't, as always. I mean, we're right off the bat. Doesn't ask us to not use magic. In fact, it's, it says it'd be silly not to do things that, that are appropriate on a level of form, and you know, to be kind meet people where they're at and just say, you know, including ourselves. And it's like, well, I took an aspirin, I think yesterday, you know, for, you know, and, you know, we, we, uh, breathing. I mean, I've been breathing, you know, that's, that's pretty magical, you know, right. uh, can, pretty consistently. And, and, uh, you know, if the course advocated against that, we'd all be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, and, and, and also, also the other thing I was just going to say real quick is, is it also, I, I try to remind myself that if I can see, everyone else regardless of whether i whether i say or don't say as part of my own mind and an extension you know then that's that becomes my opportunity to see them differently as spirit and then then i see myself that way and if i can remember to do that as quickly as i can i think that i think that's helpful yeah 
I understand. Uh, which I don't always do, but <laughs> when I do, it feels good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feels right. Yeah, yeah. Anyone else on that? Because because that's a pretty big topic. Yeah, I think there's a tremendous uh, secondary gain in suffering. And whether that's because <clears throat> if I'm in pain, then my husband will do the laundry, my kids will pick up more. If I can just be physically in pain or mentally suffering, mm -hmm. talk about my boss being a horse's ass <laughs> and such and thus. I, there, there is so much gain to be had in suffering mm -hmm. and and it brings people something and mm -hmm. it puts them further back in the line so that that god won't get to them so soon mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if i can suffer and have problems and be in p physical pain and have hopefully emotional pain too it's going to be a while before God gets to me to destroy me. Mm -hmm. And until we come to this material, we have no comprehension that we believe that we're getting something from our suffering. Yeah. Yeah. And we look for witnesses to support the suffering we have and um, the uh, pressure we're under and da, 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 da. And somebody, you know, I mean, how many times have you heard people say, oh, this is, you know, I'm having such a bad time at my job or such and thus, or somebody stole my, you know, car. Oh, you think that's bad? Let me tell you. <laughs> so it's just I, tremendous. I, yeah. Tremendous yeah. gain until you come to this material in, For sure. in suffering. Yeah, that that's a great great point, Abby. Thanks. And what comes to mind is if you haven't haven't seen it, is there's this wonderful little skit by the uh, the Monty Python troupe uh, called the Four Yorkshiremen, and they there's these you know four guys that are sitting around and you know life is good, you know they've they've kind of got it made. They're they're in their smoking jackets and you know at some fine hotel and talking about how you know yeah it hasn't always been this easy. In fact, you know when I was a kid it was really pretty tough, and then then it just it escalates down from there to where oh you were lucky to have a box to live in you know we'd love we would love to have gravel to eat you know you know but but that's yeah, that's the kind of thing that like you say you know it's like if i can be farther back in the in the cutoff line of of you know god's draft picks for 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 martyrdom uh you know or, or for for you know punishment um, you know, if I can show my my martyrdom is actually genuine, then I then you know I won't be selected to, as the first first ones out on the field to uh, to have the the gladiators <laughs> do their whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, another another thing that comes to mind is that I have a cousin who a couple of years ago uh, we were talking about. Um, you know, senior ailments and how the conversations, uh, the older you get, seem to revolve around bodily ailments and that sort of thing. And and she was saying, oh, yes, it's time for the organ recital. And I just thought that was a funny term <laughs> going through the list. But like you say, it's, it could be a mental, mental list, too. It can be, you know, what, it's, you know, countless things around that wheel of misfortune, right? I mean, even if things seem to be going well, it's sort of like that sort of Damocles dangling over, ah, oh, but, you know, someday this may fall apart and, you know, this person might leave me or, or you know, this job might end or this, you know, this current, you know, season of prosperity and health, you know, may, may just suddenly go kerplooey kind of thing. But that's, you know, we have to have that sort of built in, um, you know, failure mechanism uh, because we and it's not about what that what happens or doesn't happen in the world. I think that's the, the, the thing that the course keeps saying is that's that's really secondary to what do I want to uh, see in, in myself and everyone else. And, uh, and if I if I see someone e equal to their physical experience i'm seeing myself in that and then i then then not only is my mind against the wall but my my back's against the wall as well you know so that uh, it starts with the mind against the wall yeah tim you look like you have something to say well i was thinking about the uh the, that original um 
the opening statement, we have to figure out what the sickness is for. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, healing becomes possible. Yeah. So uh, certainly looking at the chart, uh, so in those first two paragraphs, um, there's pain, there's suffering, there's sickness, there's death, there's weakness, there's insanity. The one where he doesn't use until the end of uh, the second section is guilt. But I, I think the real guilt was the first real kind of seeming form of sickness because it really proved that we had separated. Mm -hmm. We felt terrible. We felt sick. We were nauseous because we felt so guilty about leaving heaven. So, I mean, sickness could be right here: sin, sickness, fear, mm -hmm. um, and and that. And then, then it, later on, like I say, he equates the two. So the purpose of sickness here is to prove to us the separation happened. Mm -hmm. And then the purpose of sickness in the world is continues to prove that the separation happened because there's no sickness in heaven. Even in form, there's no sickness in heaven, in form. But it also, the, the, the crowning glory of sickness in the world is somebody or something else is causing it. Here I chose it. But in this case, the sickness is coming from the purpose in the world, something external. Yep. They done so it. Yeah. it's still there, but it's just now I get to blame it on somebody or something else besides mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. right. Yep. Yeah. And that I was going to read uh, that wonderful fifth paragraph and lesson 136 because uh, it ties ties into that beautifully. The the double shield of oblivion. Yeah. Because yeah, as long as as long as there's a blame thrower in operation, we've we've got the outer shield. <laughs> e e ego's happy to say, oh. My, that mind isn't being looked at because I, I've got as long as I've got an alibi and a, and uh, like Abby was saying, I've got people ahead of me in line for the, you know, the <laughs> the torture and the, the the fires of hell or whatever. You know, it's like uh, I, I think I'm safe for a while. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Very helpful. So in this second paragraph, uh, he continues. And what in this insane conviction does healing stand for? It symbolizes the defeat of God's son and the triumph of his father over him. It represents the ultimate defiance in a direct form in which the son of God is forced to recognize. It stands for all he would hide from himself to protect his life. Yeah, that, you know, lur lurking behind the, the people in the front of the line, uh, and as Abby's metaphor suggests, right? It stands for all that he would hide from himself to protect his, quote, life, unquote. If he is healed, he is responsible for his thoughts. And if he is responsible for his thoughts, he will be killed to prove to him how weak and pitiful he is. Okay, now we've crossed that outer shield. Now we're into the secret dream, and the ego is starting to get really panicky at that point. <laughs> but if he chooses death himself, his wit weakness is his strength. Ah, the preemptive strike. The ego says, I'll, I'll take care of this, God. I'll punish myself and sacrifice and suffer and be miserable, be a, a martyr. You don't have to do a thing, you know. <laughs> You're off the hook. Now he's given himself what God would give to him and thus entirely usurped the throne of his creator and set up an, the yet another variation of the authority problem. Right? Any other comments on that section? Hey, Stephen. Oh, all good. Should we forge on to the next one? Well, I, I was thinking that he really, in these first two, he's really uh, he's really establishing the tiny man idea of sickness, that, mm -hmm. that it's sick to even think you can even leave heaven. And, and so he's really, he's going back to the original thought of sickness and then how that just kind of got projected as it went through all these, through this level and, and certainly in the world. But I always thought it was interesting that he backs up to. Uh, um, so in paragraph two, when he says, and what in this insane conviction, he could he could have said, does sickness then stand for? Well, then it, it symbolizes the the victory of, of God's son over his father. Mm -hmm. His father can't die. His father can't make something that can die. And now now. Um, in my sickness, I can prove I'm stronger than God. Mm -hmm. 
I can do what God can't do. I can get sick and die. Yep. I can get sick and leave heaven. In an elaborate fantasy, we seem to be able to pull that off all the time. But the course reminds us it's just, you know, an unimaginably elaborate 3D holographic movie of a Titanic dream that where we keep rearranging the holodeck chairs to make someone else more guilty and <laughs> and avoid being pushed in front of that line that Abby talked about. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and the sickness always is in the mind. It's 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 the belief that separation is possible. And and when it gets down to the bodily level, that's just a you know frosting on the the, the ego's cake. As long as the cake is there, that separation is possible in the mind, then it's like, okay, my mind's against the wall when when Holy Spirit starts, you know, pointing out the obvious that the ego isn't working. The ego says, "Uh oh, <laughs> time to go from suspiciousness to viciousness." You've they've scaled the walls of the outer shield of oblivion. <laughs> let's let's see what we can do to fight them off now that they're inside the castle, <laughs> the castle of guilt that I've so carefully erected to make sure my identity is not not tampered with. Yeah. Okay. Would anyone like to read the the first paragraph, the next section, the shift in perception on the next page? Vicky. Is it going to get better? Because uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, it gets better. It gets better. Oh, good. Because, <laughs> yeah. Well, like, like the course usually does, it starts off with you know a, a massive expose, no holes barred of, of absurdity and and horrific nature of the of the ego. It's, so now, so now it's bound to get better, right? <laughs> yeah, and I noticed the title of that first couple of paragraphs is the perceived purpose of sickness so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're still talking about the illusion of madness and yep, the yep. tiny mad idea yeah yeah okay um the shift in perception healing must occur in exact proportion to which the valuelessness of sickness is recognized one need but say there is no gain at all to me in this and he is healed but to say this one must first one must one first must recognize certain facts First, it is obvious that decisions are of the mind, not of the body. If sickness is but a faulty problem solving approach, it is a decision. And if it is a decision, it is the mind and not the body that makes it. The resistance to recognizing this is enormous because the existence of the world as you perceive it depends on the body being the decision maker. Okay. Terms like instincts, ref reflexes, and the like represent attempts to endow the body with non-mental motivators. Actually, such terms merely state or describe the problem. They do not answer it. Mm -hmm. Is that how much you wanted me to read? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to comment on that at all? Well, um, only to tell a very sad story. My, uh, my mother uh, dealt with her life by getting sick and she would uh, disappear in her room with a migraine for three or four days when I was young and growing up with my brothers. And so um, I just never believed her. Like, I thought she was supposed to be, you know, taking care of us and teaching us. And so she taught me, um, the valuelessness of getting sick um, in that demonstration. And then as life went on, she became an alcoholic and um, taught me also how not to become an alcoholic. So um, I was just thinking about this, recognizing that this sickness has no gain to me. Um, I think that that would have been hard for her. Mm -hmm. There was something about that that, like Abby was talking about, she got secondary um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. advantages from that, right. and right. advantages with heavy air quotes, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. When you look at the the advantages that that uh, sickness, whether it's mental or physical, uh, provides, it's it's pretty dubious at best, right? Yeah. So um, to know that it's a decision of the mind. Um, 
is definitely an important shift in perception. Not, not having the body guide me as to what, even what I'm feeling, I think emotionally, mm -hmm. physically, don't, don't ask the one that doesn't know, isn't there a line like that? Mm -hmm. Why do you ask the thing that does not know what you are? The one thing in the whole universe that doesn't know, I mean, that's what oh, we so ask. Better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, hmm. Not too smart, are we? When we're ego mode, yeah. Well, that's an interesting your account about your mother, because you know, I, th I think we all have experiences like that where you know we've seen uh, in ourselves or in others, you know, that that how that works out, and you know, the results are less than stellar. You know, we we the the real um, you know silliness i mean you could say sadness but it ultimately it's silly is that you know we needlessly deprive ourselves of the, the real connection that we have with everyone you know in your case your mother was sequestered in a room for you know three or four days at a time whatever but but uh um you know the the caring and the compassion of relating and then saying yeah let's let's work on this together and you know but but from a place of a mental place of um you know, nothing really happened. I think that's where all, uh, with the course's help, you know, Holy Spirit's help learning to do is to see that, you know, no matter what seems to be going on in the world, our real identity is intact. You know, we have, that, has, that hasn't been compromised. That hasn't been, um, you know, degraded or, or um, you know, tainted in any way by anything that the ego's thought system could muster. You know, it's, it's inviolate. It's, it's, pristine and eternally innocent and and uh sacrosanct right i was just throwing a bunch of adjectives there <laughs> you know it's, it's good it's, it's good to go <laughs> we don't have to worry about you know protecting that you know nothing real can be threatened right well and um i really understand um harmlessness of god it yeah. like to me that's that's holiness I can't get holiness because it's been so tainted in in the religious stuff that I've gone through, but I can understand holiness as harmlessness and and to have that connection to uh, to listen to harmlessness and peace, um, you know, just blessed, just blessed mm -hmm. with the course, of course. Yeah. Don't you find it a bit ironic or even two-faced when he says, oh, it's obvious that decisions are of the mind. And then two sentences later, he goes, the, re the, the resistance to recognizing this is a, a enormous. It's not <laughs> obvious, for God's sake. <laughs> I mean, maybe to Jesus is obvious. Yeah. <laughs> but on a good ego day, mm -hmm. it's not obvious. <laughs> Good point. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, it's obvious when we're, you know, have those crystal sane moments, but then, but then when the resistance kicks in, it's like, oh, well, now it's, you know, the sun is behind, you know, <laughs> stratospheric levels of, of, of cloudiness, you know, but uh, yeah. And, and how, how do you read that? Um, Sickness is a faulty problem solving approach. So the, the problem for the ego is proving to itself that it's separate. Mm -hmm. And the way it does it, it says, I feel terrible. I feel sick. I feel guilty. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't feel good anymore. So, so the problem was made up, the separation. And then the feeling is made up to support it. And then, uh, and then what? You're supposed to feel good that... <laughs> You separated and now you're sick and <laughs> and and now you're gonna feel good because you actually pulled it off. <laughs> yeah, something doesn't add up there, does it? I, I'm reminded of Ken's phrase that he want, wanted to be known by the you know the maladaptive solution to the non-existent problem. Yeah. You know, I think that fits really nicely right there because the you know the faulty problem solving approach is the belief in separation and and that's the decision we made as egos. And then to further that, we we say, well, let's make a world so that you know we really don't get caught, you know, like Abby was saying, and let's let's make sure we got a 
the blame thrower is is kept kept actively fired up all the time. So we got a ready, uh, you know, assortment of worthy candidates for who gets uh, the heat next <laughs> from the, from the egos. Uh, Temperamental God, right? Of course. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to read the next paragraph. This is one of my favorite ones. Uh, this eighth sense in particular, that it's just one phrase there. Okay, the, the acceptance of sickness as a decision of the mind for a purpose for which it would use the body is the basis of healing. And this is so for healing in all forms. A patient decides that this is so and he recovers. If he decides against recovery, he will not be healed. Who is the physician? Only the mind of the patient himself. The outcome is what he decides that it is. And here's the phrase, special agents seem to be ministering to him, yet they but give form to his own choice. So I was thinking about, you know, during the last few days, I was thinking about that, that sentence that just, I've, to me, it really s nails it is, you know, the special agents, well, that's everyone and everything. You know, an agent is really someone that that does your bidding. That you know, you you hire an agency to do things for you. You 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 uh, enlist the support of an agent to to you know work on your behalf or to represent you in some context. And but the agency is we've made the world our agent. That's that's our special agent. Every specific thing in the world becomes our special agent. You know, that's that's doing our bidding, depending on if we think of, you know, the ego special agents would be telling us, yep, guilt happened. Sure enough. And you now you got <laughs> misery, <laughs> loving company, and and uh, people agreeing with you that, you know, you pulled this dastardly deed off. You committed the perfect impossible crime. And the Holy Spirit says, get out of my courtroom. I'm, I'm firing your agents. I'm going to actually, I'm going to do better than that. I'm going to list them for, for a different purpose. I'm going to take those same agents and then uh, use them on my behalf to show you that nothing happened. And when we start start seeing everyone as as our savior, then then those special agents become, you know, the messengers of of, uh, of well, nothing happened. But that's we have to first see the the Christ in them before they show the Christ back to us, as it says elsewhere in the course, right? Anyway, let me finish this paragraph. Special agents seem to be ministering to him, yet they but give form to his own choice. He chooses them in order to bring tangible form to his desires. Uh, that's another, I think, loaded sense. It is this they do and nothing else. They are not actually needed at all. The patient could merely rise up without their aid and say, I have no use for this. There is no form of sickness that would not be cured at once. Now, that last sentence to me is a pretty all-encompassing. No form of sickness would be equivalent to no form of substitution, no form of separation, no form of specialness, no form of all those sin words, <laughs> you know, sneakiness, uh, <laughs> uh, whatever, yeah. And then that 11, they're not actually needed at all. And it, it seems like it, once in a while we, we give ourselves little demonstrations. It's like, oh, yeah, I didn't really need the specific thing. I just needed to, you know, change my mind to a state where I, I thought peace was possible regardless of the specifics. Anyway, I, I find that helpful is that if I can just you know, do, do the things that are the magic um, in the world of, you know, do all the everyday things that I would do anyway, but then realize if I can remember more and more, I think Holy Spirit would suggest that we do this mentally. And that is see that I don't really need the specifics in order to feel peaceful. I could be peaceful for no particular reason. I could see peace instead of this. So Bruce and Steve. Yeah, you know, um, as far as the magic, uh, special agents seems to be the magic we sort of choose to use to uh, help our demise in whatever it may be. But uh, if if we can understand, uh, if we can give the magic to the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. uh, 
that way we can uh, welcome the uh, relief and pain, yet understand that uh, it was a mind that was the cause of it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes uh, I know myself, I'm relinqu- relinquishing in pain, and I'll take something, you know, for the pain, and the pain will be gone. Mm-hmm. And I revert myself, my thinking back to the Holy Spirit. And I says, I'll, I'll, I'll bless it. Uh, I'll bless the, uh, the medicine, but yet I'll call on the Holy Spirit and say, help me understand that that is not what I really need. Mm-hmm. Like what he says, they are not actually needed at all. Mm-hmm. And so I says, they are not actually, where is that? I, I give that <laughs> phrase to him and leave. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's it's a bit tough you know yeah yeah but um just to uh understand where our minds can be is such a uh, such a hopeful and glorious thing yeah it is isn't jesus, it? that jesus so puts forth uh it just makes you want to go there yeah yeah thank you yeah yeah that just real real one quick comment. It just seems like, you know, that and that hope is that that oh yeah, I don't really actually need because when we first read this, like Tim was saying was in the earlier paragraphs, it's like that's kind of a stretch, you know. It's like what I don't actually need, you know, this specific thing. Well, if we can just have a few moments of recognizing that we sometimes have been peaceful when an outside observer might have said well gee you know there's things that aren't so great going on but yet you're still peaceful how come is that you know and 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 yet it's our interpretation of things that is where the the lack of peace uh, arises so i I think that seems like a a helpful way to try to remember it's like that cognitive faculty that says i i am interpreting things with if I'm interpreting things with ego, I'm going to find just about any excuse to not be at peace, and I'll I'll, I'll have an abundance of those. But well, if know, I, well, oh, good, yeah, yeah, but you know, we can't deny our our uh, our we can't deny the right to to choose wrongly, you know. Of, co- if, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, we can't deny yeah. that right because yeah. if we do that, then it'll it'll be, it'll be impossible. Here. Right, right, yeah, yeah. We have to feel what we're feeling, and and you know, yeah, not deny our experience. Steps, no. Yeah, exactly, you know, exactly. Can't yeah. skip steps, but you know, you you have to understand it is a step in, yeah. in the process of forgiveness mm-hmm. in order in order for one not to skip it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, particularly vigilant and diligent at uh, looking at this. Uh, sicknesses in the mind thing um, for about a month, maybe two. I found this in uh, Sickness is a Defense Against the Truth uh, in the workbook, uh, Lesson uh, 136. Mm-hmm. I was going to go there and, next, so you're, you're, you're on, on the right track. <laughs> uh, and, well, you, us, yeah. Maybe you're about to do this, but uh, I, I really have a question. Okay. Uh, and and it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy question. Uh, now is the body healed because the source of sickness has been open to relief and you will recognize you practiced well by this the body should not feel at all if you have been successful there will be no sense of feeling ill or feeling well of pain or pleasure no response at all is in the mind to what the body does its usefulness remains and nothing more. I've experienced this in moments mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. with uh, several uh, particularly uh, uh, harsh and terrorizing pain in my life. Uh, uh, but I, 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 I have never met anybody or never talked to anyone who has experienced this uh, on a regular basis or as an all day long thing mm-hmm. or as part of their walkabout. In in, uh, in in using the course uh, to help them to get to a place where the body does not feel at all. Do we know anybody ever did that? 
I, I can think of a few examples of people that I think might have practiced it probably more often than most of us. Uh, one in particular is a fellow named Jack Schwartz, who I, I was a, a Nazi uh, a concentration camp survivor. And I, I probably told this story a few times, but he, he, he gave a lecture um, in California that I heard about how he was being whipped by a, a Nazi guard and, you know, lashes you know, on his back and blood was running down. And, and he had this epiphany that he realized that he, uh, the guard was in as much psychological pain as he was in physical pain. And if I am recalling how he shared that, and he was realizing, you know, how can I condemn this guard uh, who's who's obviously experiencing this this you know inner turmoil, and uh, and it would just basically you know change things on the spot for him in that moment, and he he you know didn't feel any pain. His his wounds physically started healing, which I think is sort of. It, it, immaterial to the, the psychological transformation that's really important part and um but you know he realized a feeling of true compassion i think and and this experience and it really transformed his life and after that he could return to that state in his mind uh he called it a voluntary state kind of thing it's because it's, it is a voluntary thing and um he was studied by places like the manager foundation they could stick knitting needles through his arm and when he was in that frame of mind um he wouldn't feel any pain he wouldn't bleed and all that kind of stuff um but then he said but he was quick to point out he says yeah but if i'm not in that frame of mind it's yeah i'm gonna bleed and hurt, it'll hurt like hell like everyone else but i i, I think you know he was kind of doing what s some of the yogis and you know, that sort of thing have reportedly have done uh, but I, I don't think the, the course is asking us to become, you know, physical, <laughs> you know, champions of, of that technique, but it's, but really just you keep bringing it back to the mind and realize that if I'm, if I'm using the ego's interpretation of anything, that's where I'm, you know, setting myself up for the psychological pain, which is really the only thing we really need to ultimately address. And then the, not, not that we don't do take care of on the level of form and use whatever magic is appropriate, you know, the, the, uh, to address the, you know, the physical stuff. Yeah. yeah I, I didn't, uh, I didn't, t that's uh, paragraph 17. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sickness, I, sickness, yeah. Yeah. That's a great one. And, uh, and two and 260 yeah. in the, just, just, for, I just, I, I'm just looking for a way to get to this and I, I, I'm hoping for uh for some ideas on that thank you very much bruce that's very helpful because you just told me somebody did it and all the you know the yogi stories there's a bunch of those yeah so, yeah thank you which is you know it's, it's one path and 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 i think that's you know can be illustrative but it seems like the most important thing is is you know as students of the course it's like well if i can learn to generalize this over time with holy spirit's help then um that's that's real freedom you know that's I think that's the freedom that the course is at. And, and it really helps us to see everyone with with uh, you know, true true compassion as well. Anyway, yeah, thanks. Great question. I was thinking about the uh, the ways special love and special hate play into this whole idea of sickness. Mm -hmm. For example, back in the um, back in the manual on page 18. Paragraph eight, instead of saying special agents, I could say all my special love relationships seem to be ministering to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and yet, mm -hmm. but they get formed to my own choice. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I've chosen to believe that I'm a body. Mm -hmm. And for I get these few crumbs of a special love relationship, whether it's from a substance or it's from a person. And I feel better as a body, as a personality for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then the special hate um, simply proves who's responsible for my sickness, who's making me feel bad. Yep. Yep. So the special yep. love proves I'm a body because I, I feel better as a body for a little bit. The special mm -hmm. hate proves I'm a body because I'm sick and somebody else is causing it. Mm -hmm. and, and then the way that plays out in line nine, I, we, he choose them these special love relationships in order to bring tangible form to my desires mm -hmm. well the underlying desire was always to say separate and then believe project all that onto a body 
and believe that I, I now can feel better for a few seconds with special love and I can blame somebody with special hate when I don't feel so good. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. The special love, special hate uh, is, is a hugely big part of that, you know, applying that, isn't it? Yeah. I was thinking that, you know, the phrase damned if you do, damned if you don't, it's sort of like the ego's mantra is like, I, I'm damned if you do what I, um, you know, want you to do, because then I'm at the mercy of when you don't, because <laughs> then I'm damned if you don't. <laughs> but in either case, I'm making the body real, I'm making separation real, I'm making specialness real, and I'm saying that, uh, you know, God is dead because there's no mercy here, and I, I've made up a, a dream where mercy, you know, isn't possible because I'm always at the, at the you know, the result of what's happening in a dream. And, and even, you know, like all special love relationships have a shelf life. I mean, eventually they're going to give out. I mean, aspirin's only going to work so long. Right. You know, special right. love partner is only going to work so long and then it's going to give out. Then I get to blame the aspirin or the person for me feeling miserable, mm -hmm. really miserable now. Because <laughs> you made me feel good for a little while. Now, look, <laughs> it don't work no more. <laughs> The damn virus mutated, so now that my right. my wonder, wonderful medicine isn't Experience. doing it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, the ever shifting landscape of special. Are you, are you saying that? Yeah. Are you saying that everything ends up into special hate form? Eventually. Yeah, that's that's the the heat death of the universe. This is all special hate yeah. spread out across the cosmos. <laughs> and so you death. you pull that rug on guilt and. And, and then, I mean, guilt just so maintains that we're a body and we're susceptible to all this stuff. If you pull the rug on guilt, the other person isn't responsible for making me feel bad because mm -hmm. I, I just stopped choosing to feel bad. And then how that plays out physically, I mean, you can see where the miracle would be then. You know, yeah, I might be in physical pain, but it's not rocking my peace anymore. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I was thinking about you, what you just shared, Tim, as far as, you know, the special love and special hate being the, you know, prime examples of, of the special agents. And I look at, you know, looking at the chart, it, it, the, on the level of form, we have all these bodies and, and specific people that are acting as our special agents for the special love, special hate agendas that are in our mind. And when we, you know, get past the outer shield of oblivion, that veil of forgetfulness, it's like, oh, that's, that's, that's right. It's my choice. Um, that's where we really, you know, need Holy Spirit, at least as much, if not more, to say, okay, but the guilt didn't happen. And I don't really need that guilt at all. Uh, that they are not actually needed at all is that they, the, the, the special agents of guilt through special love and special hate aren't needed at all. Yeah. Thanks. And the, and the I have no use for this. I don't have any use for special love and special hate relationships anymore. Exactly. I mean, the use was always to prove it. Well, I wasn't the guilty party. I wasn't choosing right. this. Yeah. I have no use for this. Right. And then there's no form of sickness. I mean, there'll be tons of, I mean, be, thinking your body in the first place is pretty sick. I mean, the bodies are going to get sick. They're going to croak. Uh, but I mean, it's just like there's no form of sickness that would my investment in that sickness would immediately be cured. I wouldn't have to be looking for guilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we wouldn't need the special love, special hate, but we still, with Holy Spirit's help, would use every little relationship to everything and everyone as an instrument of kindness and letting off the hook. And, and, uh, yeah, in that moment. So, yeah. so we, so we're, so we're in the world, and we have our special, special relationships, and uh, starts out with love, and it ends up with hate. So the miracle then takes us back, back up, and back up into the secret dream, mm -hmm. and helps us realize just exactly what we're hating. Mm -hmm. We're not hating the form. We're not hating the person. We're hating, um, we're hating the guilt that put us there. Mm -hmm. The little less self that we made up that we think pulled off this impossible crime of separation. We, we believe that it happened. And 
once we see that that was a bogus idea, it's like, oh, well, that changes everything. So, our, so <laughs> I what can let everyone off the hook, including myself. So what we're so what we're saying that our true forgiveness ends up in the uh, with the uh, with the miracle and the Holy Spirit looking at the secret dream. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's where it ultimately ends up. Yeah, to to have us understand that it's, it's all made up. Mm -hmm. Of course, we we don't want to see it as silly and forgivable. The Holy Spirit just waits patiently until we even consider that idea. Well, what if it, what if it's just a, a, a little acute cosmic joke that had had no impact on on reality that we took seriously, and and he's just waiting patiently for us to see the humor in it and uh, and drop the seriousness that we've ascribed to everything. And so it isn't a lawyer. It isn't a traffic jam. <laughs> It isn't a special one you love. It's there in the secret dream. That that's where uh, your guilt lies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when your house burns down, you know, it's it, it's an act of uh, you think it's an act of a punishment of God, right? Oh, well, my home! I because I I choose my home here instead of. Where I'm supposed to choose my home. Mm -hmm. So that then, if you take that then in the world and take it back to the secret dream, the Holy Spirit can understand that you are home. You never left home. Mm -hmm. And you're not upset for the reason you think. Yep. Your home is not burning. Right. Still a good idea to change the batteries on your smoke detectors. But <laughs> yeah, that's but, true. But but if, but if it does, if that fails, yeah, yeah. Well, no, and you're on the street with the few possessions you grab running out of the burning house. I mean, house. I'm not a pyro, yeah. you know. <laughs> right, right. You know, yeah. Besides all that, but that that counts in everything as well. Yeah, I mean, your your uh, psychological pyromania is part of your insane. Uh, wish mm -hmm. yeah to, to be separate and it just it's just a uh, a larger mania in your psychological behavior mm -hmm. that, that creates this disturbance yeah yeah it, it's i think it's noticing the ego as a self-sabotaging uh insane thought system and how it will you know set up things to say oh, I, oh now i've got this to deal with and oh now it's that and 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 you know just gently look at that and say yeah and <laughs> peace of god and uh, I, 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 yeah, to me now yeah <laughs> but say again uh, but the peace of god envelopes me now Isn't that exactly what yeah 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 that's today's yeah yeah uh -huh. something like that yeah yeah okay let's do that that sounds good. <laughs> Be enveloped by the peace of God instead of the the box canyon uh, stuckness of of egos, uh, backs and minds against the wall. Yeah. I, I was thinking about like 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 why why do why do you launch into sickness after he just talked about these amazing qualities of the advanced teacher of God? And now we're now we're, now he's like okay, we talked about the good stuff. That's now true, we got to go true. back to. <laughs> Let's get a little practical here. <laughs> so uh -huh. I was thinking the opposite of all those wonderful characteristics that Bruce was talking about and then Stephen was talking about. They're all uh, they're all forms of sickness. The opposite of of defenselessness, being defensive is a is a form of sickness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Impatience is a form of sickness. Mm -hmm. Closed mindedness is a form of sickness. I mean, all that's all that. I mean, he, he's like. Yeah, this is this is where you'll be. This is where you already are. You just don't know it yet. And when you let go of all these forms of sickness, the opposite of each of these qualities, you'll realize you're already okay. <laughs> yeah. And then you can walk around and whatever's done to your body, you won't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> like Stephen was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you'll you'll 
you'll, you'll experience the sensation, but you won't interpret it. I, I find that helpful, you know, because there's times when, you know, I'll, I'll stub a toe or do, do some, you know, something like that. And it's like, if I can catch it real quick and say, oh, do I want to get upset about this? Then I can still, it's like the sensation is the same, but it's almost like the, the press core that, you know, is covering the event, you know, doesn't have as much to go on. And it just says, well, there's this neutral event, but uh, we don't have anything further to say about it. <laughs> the, the neurons are firing and sending signals to the brain, but uh, but the uh, the dispatch of 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 arsenals to to combat this has uh, somehow uh, you know it's been called off. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, something like that. I don't know. Anyway. Okay, uh, any volunteers for the th paragraph three, Lisa? I love this paragraph, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's just kind of what we've just been talking about. Anyway, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> what is the single requisite for this shift in perception? It is simply this, the recognition that sickness is of the mind and has nothing to do with the body. What does this recognition quote unquote cost it costs the whole world you see for the world will never again appear to rule the mind for with this recognition is responsibility placed where it belongs not with the world but on him who looks on the world and sees it as it is not he looks on what he chooses to see no more and no less the world does nothing to him he only thought it did nor does he do anything to the world because he was mistaken about what it is. Herein is the release from guilt and sickness both, for they are one. Yet to accept this release, the insignificance of the body must be an acceptable idea. But this is a great paragraph. I mean, mm -hmm. this is what shifted me. I mean, I don't do it 100% of the time, but this shifted me in my whole way of doing forgiveness because I realized it wasn't out there. It was in my mind. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. anyway, yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, even though, as we all know, that uh, and this section points out, you know, the resistance to uh, recognizing this is enormous, but even stronger than, you know, the ego's... Uh, foolproof plan is the fact that it's our curriculum is god is is uh you know god, the, the god proof thing kicks in and uh and it's like well okay we're we're all going to figure this out we're all going to want to voluntarily be motivated and have that as our purpose to to mindfully gently vigilantly look at the like, stuff going on in our mind and say do i really want to interpret this the way i've been interpreting this that gives me an excuse for uh, being a martyr and a victim and, and uh, at the mercy of the world? Or do I want to just say, well, okay, yeah, there's this objective thing happening. I could see X, Y, and Z as, as being purely neutral events. And it, you know, I take this as a stretch, but, but at some point, I think it becomes a little easier. And, uh, you know, we would just apply it to little things first. And then, then it's like, oh, oh, yeah, that wasn't a big deal. This this confrontation I would have had with my life partner about uh, you know some household trivia that that <laughs> used to be a big deal now it's like yeah whatever doesn't doesn't mean we stop doing the things that we would be doing anyway it just means that I could I could see it as an opportunity to to practice forgiveness yeah I, I like it when he says an acceptable idea you don't even have to accept it you just have to say what if it's possible <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh-huh yeah that's pretty good <laughs> it is yeah just not not a, a pre-condemned uh before even looking at it idea yeah mm -hmm. lisa's way and i liked what you said before about um if you stub your toe you can like see it as a neutral event and i it, th this is becoming sometimes not a, a more and more more and more it's happening where i can see an event as like just the event itself without the story i put mm -hmm. around it mm -hmm. and that 
that makes it a lot easier. You mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. It, it does. It's actually easier to do forgiveness yeah. that way. You know. Good, yeah. Good point. Good point. Yeah. yeah, and it's 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 the, you know, the actual um, e- event in terms of you know the sensory data and you know the the physicality, if you will, of it is is like well, that's even modern physics tells us that we made that up too, but it's then the, the interpretation that then takes us this, this little thing and, you know, we got a, you know, full press coverage of, you know, reporters and, and uh, uh, <laughs> international wire services, you know, broadcasting it to all parts of our mind, you know, it's like, Oh, well now it's now this is a big deal, you know, but uh, you know, if it just sort of fades off into the next, the next little, trivia uh, it doesn't have to become a big big thing i was watching trevor noah today um a little clip on youtube because he's not doing his show anymore and he was talking about the, the three things he's learned over the seven years he's been doing the show and the second one was um the awareness that yeah there are individual issues that need to be dealt with but you really have to put it in the context of the whole story (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. otherwise you make the issue the issue and and you don't see what what the purpose was in the context of the whole story Mm -hmm. i thought it was i mean i forget what the other two were they were really good too but that was good i'll have to check that out yeah used to watch the show a lot yeah yeah, the context is everything, isn't it? I mean, that the big the big picture is what Jesus, Holy Spirit wants us to look at. It's like, you know, what 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 am I doing with my mind? Yeah, where was I going with this life? Yeah, what <laughs> what was I hoping, hoping to accomplish here? Yeah. I mean, what's the why? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then paragraph four. Anyone want to read that one? Rebecca, thank you. All right. With this idea, is pain forever gone? I feel like I need to go back up and think about what <laughs> The acceptable idea, right? The, the acceptable idea. The, the insignificance of the body. I think that was oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 oh, yeah. The body's not real. Yeah. Okay. But with this idea goes also, but with this idea goes also all confusion about creation. I just want to sit with that for a second because we really believe that creation is physical. I think that's it. Like we really have defined creation as physical, like making something 3d. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We got, we got Adam and God and fingers sparks going across fingers and all kinds of stuff that, you know, yeah. seems to yeah. confirm that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sistine chapels and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and this whole world we call the creation of God. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Does not this follow of necessity? Place cause and effect in their true sequence in one respect, and the learning will generalize and transform the world, right? You get it in one place, you'll get it in all places, eventually, Mm -hmm. eventually. The transfer value of one true idea has no end or limit. The final outcome of this lesson is remembrance of God. What do guilt and sickness, pain, disaster, and all suffering mean now? Without a, without a body. Mm-hmm. Having mm-hmm. no purpose, they are gone. And with them also go all the effects they seem to cause. Cause and effect, but replicate creation seen in their proper perspective without distortion and without fear they reestablish heaven mm-hmm. um yeah when when I mean, we talk about this idea that we're not a body, right? And there's so many levels, there are so many levels of realization of that, but there's so much freedom 
in the memory and and it doesn't have i mean I wish we were all living in this constant state of remembering that, but we're not. Um, but when we do remember that, like, even though in the dream, somebody's dying of cancer, even though in the dream, this, these, these, these things are happening to remember that we are eternal. We are the eternal son of God and anything can happen in this seeming reality um but nothing really happens mm -hmm. um it's it's just it's really lovely I've been, i don't know if this has any relation but i've been thinking about this idea of pain um and i had two ideas come to mind one is waxing one's eyebrows i don't know if anybody has done that but some of the people on the screen have um but it's so interesting, right? So like the first time you wax your eyebrows, it really hurts. But you're like, no, no, I, the outcome is going to be good. And then eventually, like you learn to really enjoy it. <laughs> it's like, it actually feels good. It's satisfying. It's the same idea as a tattoo, right? So, you know, a tattoo hurts, but the result is worth it. So then it does, you don't feel the pain in the same way. So anyway those are just examples in the dream of distortions of what pain is like we decide what pain is we decide what pain is um for what the outcome is you know i'm willing to suffer all kinds of pain to have tattoos put on my body but i feel slightly inconvenienced by someone and i'm too sick to go to their house you know <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's just an interesting way to look at it. Hmm, yeah. That is, that is, yeah. Yeah, the orders of difficulties and miracles maybe uh, yeah, could something. apply there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Orders of difficulties and in, in, uh, interpretations and, and uh, you know, what's, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, and what's tolerable, what's not tolerable. Yeah. That's a whole new definition of the Holy Spirit, the great ego waxer. <laughs> Just keep doing it. Eventually, it'll stop hurting. <laughs> <laughs> or eventually, you realize it doesn't hurt at all. And maybe it never did. You just thought it did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really good example is, is you know, when, when when you want an outcome, the, you know, the the cost sometimes diminishes in in importance and you know tattoos are one example i i remember when i was building a, a house in northern california if you know as an owner builder i the this the sound and the smell of a caterpillar tractor that my neighbor had normally would be like yeah you know, gag but but when i he was out there cutting a pad for me to build this house you know i was like wow that's, this is great you know <laughs> you know, it, it, it's it's all relative right when 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 yeah. it's you think you're getting something and it's it's a motivation really for I interpretation hate, i hated the sound of my father vacuuming i hated it, it used to wake me up every fucking saturday morning <laughs> and it's the thing i miss them one of the things i miss the most huh. well, you know mm -hmm. just, you never know yeah yeah, so I, I hated hearing the sound of my father eating. I would, it would just go, <laughs> <laughs> and now I miss it. <laughs> and this is shift in perception, and paragraph three, line six, really stretch, strikes um, what we were, we've been saying. He looks on what he chooses to see, no more and no less. Mm -hmm. The world does nothing to him. He only thought it did. Pretty simple there. Really simple, isn't it? I mean, that's just profoundly simple. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I thought I thought I'd close by by reading um, one of my favorite paragraphs in, in lesson 136, um, which actually could be a whole class and has been actually a few times. <laughs> but but that double shield of oblivion, I think this the only place it's mentioned in the course is 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 such a really neat helpful concept. So this is paragraph five in lesson 136. And uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to actually 
I think I've got time to read the first five paragraphs and then we'll just end up with that. Um, this is sickness is a defense against the truth. Uh, no one can heal unless he understands what purpose sickness seems to serve, for then he understands as well its purpose has no meaning. Being causeless, which we were just talking about, and without a meaningful intent of any kind or purpose or motive, it cannot be at all. When this is seen, healing is automatic. And we've withdrawn, you know, the, the craziness. <laughs> it dispels this meaningless illusion by the same approach that carries all of them to truth and merely leaves them there to disappear. You know, bringing the darkness to the light. Sickness is not an accident. Like all defenses, it is an insane device for self-deception. And like all the rest, its purpose is to hide reality, attack it, change it, render it inept, distort it, twist it, or reduce it to a little pile of unassembled parts. The belief in separation. The aim of all defenses is to keep the truth from being whole. The parts are seen as if each one were whole within itself. The authority problem. Right? Defenses are not unintentional, nor are they made without awareness. They are secret magic wands you wave when the truth appears to threaten what you would believe. They seem to be unconscious, but because of the rapidity with which you choose to use them. Split second decision to go back into the ego, but it could be a split second decision to go back to our right minds. In that second, even less, in which the choice is made, you recognize exactly what you would attempt to do and then proceed to think that it is done. And then we build a whole material universe to give form to that desire to be the special agents ministering to that choice, right? Who but yourself evaluates a threat, decides escape is necessary, and sets up a series of defenses to reduce the threat that has been judged as real. Okay, as, uh, as Abby was saying earlier, I know she, see she's dropped up, but that wonderful, you know, push everyone ahead of us in, in the, the sacrifice line <laughs> so God deals with them first, right? Yeah. Okay, all this cannot be done unconsciously. But afterwards, your plan requires that you must forget you made it. So it seems to be external to your own intent. Here's projection. A happening beyond your state of mind, an outcome with a real effect on you instead of one affected by yourself. Moi, complicit in my projections. <laughs> it is this, here we go. It is this quick forgetting of the part you play in making your, quote, reality, end quote, that makes defenses seem to be beyond your own control. And there's that veil of forgetfulness, right? But what you have forgot can be remembered given willingness to reconsider the decision, which is doubly shielded by oblivion. And there's the outer and inner shields, the outer shield being the world and our bodies and everything in it that seems to say, I'm at the mercy of space and time and matter and the, the whole dream. And then the inner one that says, nope, can't go there. That's where the guilt is. Ego says, stay away from that <laughs> door in the ceiling. It's, it's dark and it's awful there. And Holy Spirit says, sure. Yeah, come on, let's go there. I'll, I'll hold your hand. We'll take a look at it and see that nothing happened. You're not remembering as a, but the sign that this decision still remains in force as far as your desires are concerned. Mistake not this for fact. Defenses must make facts unrecognizable. They aim at doing this, and it is this they do. So anyway, I just thought, that's a, I, I find that really helpful to just realize, okay, if I, if I get Holy Spirit's help and every moment I withdraw my projections and this, I, I reassign the special agents a new purpose, I take the special love and hate that, that I would have used from the ego and say, no, every, everyone in my life then becomes my savior, reminding me that, that uh, with uh, my inner kindness teacher at the helm, I'm going to see everyone as as a reminder that my mind has the power to see innocence everywhere. So with that thought, why don't we just meditate on the innocence that's beyond the outer and inner shield of oblivion for a few moments. How's that sound?
All right. Thank you all for sharing the journey back to the innocence we never left. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. Thank, Thank you, you, Bruce. Thank you, everybody. Great class. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everyone. Have a nice night, evening. Maya. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Au revoir, mon ami. Night, <laughs> all. Thank you. Good night. Good night.